What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 video. So I've done quite a few videos at this point on Gen 2 Linux for the PS4, showing you how to install Gen 2 Linux on your jailbroken PS4, and also how to do things like uh, run more PC games and run the CMU emulator on there as well. And in those videos, I did get asked quite a few times about the performance difference between a base PS4 and a PS4 Pro. So how much better is the performance on a PS4 Pro or how much worse is the performance if they if you have a base PS4 instead of a PS4 Pro when running games on Linux on the PS4. So that is what we're going to have a look at today. I can do a comparison video here and show you guys the differences between the two systems to see how much of a performance gap there actually is when you're running Linux on the PS4. So so before we get started, I am running the three gigabytes of VRAM payload on both systems. I'm also running the same Gen 2 image on both systems off the same SSD. So there shouldn't be any kind of performance bottleneck where storage is concerned. I'm not running it off like a slow USB 2 USB stick. So anyway, getting into this, First thing I did was to run the Unigen Valley benchmark three times on each system and compare the results, average out the results. So first of all, for the base PS4, we got a average result of 22 frames per second. This is running on medium settings with anti-aliasing disabled and we only got 22 frames per second on the PS4. Of course, same settings on the PS4 Pro and we got a average frame rate of 27 frames per second. So five FPS difference between the base PS4 and the PS4 Pro. Not as big a difference as you would maybe expect between these two systems so far. So next up we had Doom 2016 on OpenGL and this was actually the most surprising result for me because the base PS4 actually outperformed the PS4 Pro by just one to two frames per second, that's all. So just a tiny increase, but for some reason, don't ask me why, but the base PS4 was able to outperform the PS4 Pro by one to two frames per second. Now you might think it's something to do with the gamma since the PS4 Pro is darker. That's just to do with the different capture cards that were used to record the footage. It's not the actual settings in game, the settings are identical. So yeah, very surprising result there. The PS4 slightly beating the PS4 Pro just by one or two frames per second uh, on Doom 2016. And it's the same exact result when it comes to uh, Vulkan as well. So this is Doom running on Vulkan, the Vulkan API. And again, the difference is actually even more substantial where the PS4 is actually getting uh, a few frames per second more than the PS4 Pro. Again, very surprising. I was not expecting this, but uh, yeah. The PS4 is beating the PS4 Pro here on Doom 2016. So very strange results there. So moving on, I also tested Left 4 Dead 2, an older game. So this is uh, kind of hard to tell because the frame rate is very sporadic on this game. It go darts about all over the place. But as you can see, generally speaking, the PS4 Pro is getting a higher frame per second on average than the base PS4. You can see it's hitting into the high 50s and 60s more often than the base PS4. Uh, so again, it's very hard to tell given how jumpy the frame rate is on that game, but, but that's where we stand on Left 4 Dead 2, so slightly better with the PS4 Pro. Okay, so moving on to an emulator here, we have the Dolphin emulator running Mario Kart Wii, and the game speed is actually tied to the frame rate here. So as you can see, the PS4 Pro is running slightly faster than the base PS4 here. So we are getting a higher frame rate. This is running on OpenGL right now as well. So you can tell that there is a bit of a difference there based on the game speed. So looking at the frame rate, you can see that we are getting about four to five frames per second higher on the PS4 Pro than what we're getting on the base PS4 here. You can see it's hitting into the low 50s every now and then, whereas the base PS4 never reaches higher than the 40s, kind of the mid, the mid to high 40s. Uh, whereas you can see the PS4 Pro is consistently going into the 50 frames per second range. Again, same exact graphical settings uh, set up here. So now we're moving on to Vulkan, and it's basically the same story on Vulkan as well. So as you can see, we're clearly getting higher frame rates on the PS4 Pro. It's again going into the kind of low 50s every now and then a lot more frequently. And the base PS4 actually never reaches the low 50s at all. It's always sort of in the 30 to 40 range, 
whereas the PS4 Pro is consistently uh, hitting it into those 50s, even the high 50s occasionally. So we're definitely seeing a fairly significant increase in the frame rate uh, from the PS4 Pro compared to the base PS4 here. And it's kind of hard to tell maybe, but um, if you look closely, you can see that the PS4 Pro, the game is running slightly faster than it than how it's running on the PS4. You can see it's almost slight, slightly slow motion on the base PS4 there. So anyway, that's uh, Mario Kart Wii. So let's move on. So taking a look at loading times now. So this is Doom 2016 loading the first campaign mission. Obviously, things have been sped up uh, so that we can uh, save some time here. But the timer is in seconds and we loaded in 27 seconds on the PS4 Pro compared to 35 seconds on the base PS4. So that's a decent improvement of about eight seconds there. So eight seconds faster loading on the PS4 Pro. And now we have Left 4 Dead 2 loading. Now this takes quite a while to load and this is loading again the first campaign mission. As you can clearly see by the loading bar in the bottom right hand corner, we are loading significantly faster here on the PS4 Pro compared to the base PS4. And we are done loading in 43 seconds on the PS4 Pro compared to 50, basically 56 seconds on the base PS4. PS4 Pro, 43 seconds, base PS4, uh, 56 seconds. So 13 seconds of improvement there between the two. So the question is, why are we not seeing a decent performance between the two systems? Because the PS4 Pro is significantly more powerful than the PS4 at 4.2 teraflops compared to the PS4's 1.8 teraflops. You know, we've got higher frequencies, higher CPU, higher GPU clocks, more cores on the GPU, faster memory speed. Everything on the PS4 should result in a significant performance improvement than the base PS4, but we're just not seeing that. We're only seeing a very slight improvement between the two. And this could be down to the um, custom drivers for 3D hardware acceleration that were made to actually support the PS4. Um, these custom drivers don't uh, report the actual frequencies and stuff. So, you know, any tools I try and use on Linux to grab the actual speed of the memory and the, the frequency of the GPU clock just result in, uh, you know, not applicable information, just unknown. It's not able to report that back. So I can't tell exactly what's going on, but from what I would guess is that the driver that was made was probably made for the base PS4 and it just works on the PS4 Pro as well, but it hasn't been, you know, made to specifically utilize the extra GPU performance of the PS4 Pro. So because of that, um, we're not actually seeing much of a difference because the PS4 Pro is probably running its GPU at the same performance level as the base PS4. So it's probably only utilizing the same number of GPU cores as the base PS4, and it's probably running the GPU clock at the same speed as the base PS4 as well, because it's maybe like a one size fits all driver uh, for the GPU, which is unfortunate if that's the case, because that's a lot of missed potential, uh, a lot of performance that's been wasted in the PS4 Pro compared to the base PS4 by not utilizing the full performance of that system. So. Yeah, that seems to be possibly what's going on. And if that is the case, you might be thinking that the frame rate should be the same then between the two systems. But actually, the difference between the frame rates could be down to the CPU clock speeds, where the base PS4 is running at 1.6 gigahertz and the PS4 Pro is running at 2.1 gigahertz. So 500 megahertz difference between the two. So that actually does make a significant difference in the frame rate because you have to bear in mind that the CPUs are bottlenecking the GPU significantly with such low clock speeds. I mean, the CPU 1.6 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz, that's not great for gaming. You know, if you think about gaming PCs, people are running four gigahertz CPUs these days, uh, even going into the five gigahertz on some high-end gaming systems. So a low CPU clock like this on the PS4 is gonna significantly bottleneck the GPU, resulting in these low performance numbers, the low FPS, and that 500 megahertz more that the PS4 Pro has over the base PS4 uh, could explain why we're seeing that five to six FPS improvement. And of course the loading speed improvements as well in the PS4 Pro compared to the base PS4. So that could explain it. 
Um, it could also be that actually the PS4 Pro is utilizing the GPU fully. Um, however, just because the CPUs are bottlenecking both systems so much, we don't actually really see much of a difference there. So that could be the thing. So if you were thinking of getting a PS4 Pro over a PS4 to get better performance when running Linux, it's probably not worth it given how little of a performance difference you actually get between the two. Maybe this can be improved by some, you know, driver tweaks to fully utilize the PS4 Pro's performance. You know, if there is an issue with the driver not fully taking advantage of the PS4 Pro's extra performance, then maybe we could see that in future and run some more tests and hopefully get better performance in future. But uh, as of right now, uh, the difference is negligible. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Thank you.